Welcome back. You're tuned into Half Time Report here on CNBC TV 18. Well, uh, let's move on then. And COVID 19 has uh, disrupted the way businesses are conducted, and online has now come to the fore. Here's the view coming in from uh, Mr. Chandrasekharan, Chairman of Tata Sons, on the new digital world. COVID 19 could be a catalyst. It could be a catalyst. catalyst towards the adoption of digital technology, which will open health and education to millions. It could be a catalyst towards a more resilient economy, and it could be a catalyst towards a more sustainable future. The new India I speak of can be the global leader in R&D, science and technology, artificial intelligence, advanced manufacturing, and the next generation of products and services for the mankind. Across the developing world, SMEs account for a one-third of the private sector employment. But in India, it's a different story. Only a little more than 10% of our employees are in a similar enter enterprises in India. We have millions of micro-enterprises, but these are neither job-creating nor resilient. Those who work for them do so informally with very little protection or security. We should create a national digital platform that aggregates and localizes business services. We must ensure all SMEs in every corner of our country have access to the financing as well as the technological knowledge that is required for them to succeed. Okay, that's the word coming in there. But let's get back to the markets now because every minor dip is getting bought. And in general, this has been an amazing year for the market so far. From the lows in March, the Nifty is up 50% throughout the lockdown. So imagine, uh, you know, bulls have really come back in a big way. We had a chance to speak with uh, James Sullivan, who is the Managing Director of Asia Equity Research at JP Morgan, on what he's made of the big rally in the Indian equity markets and whether he continues to back India or not. Listen into what he had to say. We are actually underweight India right now. And, and let me explain some of the, the underlying rationale behind that call. We really think the most critical thing for investors to be focused on is this concept of lost growth. One of the biggest things that we saw uh, as an impact from the global financial crisis in 2008 was a change in the growth rate of the global economy and a downshifting of the global economy. We're seeing the same type of impact uh, off the COVID crisis on a global basis, JP Morgan is forecasting four percentage points of lost growth at the end of 2021. So this is not just a short-term conversation. So again, the global number is 4%. The lost growth for a market like China would be only 70 basis points. For India, that number is 9.8%. And so we do see a significantly shallower slope of growth for the Indian economy moving forward, which makes the valuations that we're looking at in the market somewhat challenging. This concept that liquidity should absolutely result in higher valuations. And I would challenge that pretty aggressively for the following reason. If you think about the way the math works uh, around a discount equation, um, to just go very quickly into the math, um, yes, the risk-free rate is a component of that, but so is future growth expectation. And one of the things that we see going on in markets right now is this argument that lower rates mean higher valuations. The problem with that theoretically is it's failing to adjust for these lower long-term growth assumptions. Why are rates low? Because we expect the global economy to grow at slower rates moving forward. So as a result, actually, when you look at the underlying math of the situation, markets should not be trading at higher valuations solely on the basis of lower rates because we're effectively ignoring the other half of the coin, which is future expected growth rates. The IT services space is one in India that we remain positive on. The dislocations that we're seeing in terms of government shutdowns impact IT services far less, given a significant ability to work from home so that they're not losing access to their workforce. The complexity of operating environments for all large companies really encourages these IT services firms to, to have uh, larger contract opportunities moving forward. You also are seeing very clear idiosyncratic opportunities within certain industries. And I point to the telecom industry uh, as an opportunity. As people look to move to more of a white box environment for 5G network infrastructure uh, environments, 
that does offer an opportunity for very significant uh, service integration contracts uh, for the larger IT services firms in India. Well, Godrej Properties just came out with its set of numbers and no surprises that it was a disappointment because the revenue numbers has come down sharply by more than 80% or in terms of EBITDA, it's a loss out there and net uh, loss as well is something that they have reported. I think everyone knew that the last quarter was a washout and the management commentary is going to be quite important and have they seen some kind of traction on the ground? That's something that we'll be tracking for the time being. The stock is reacting to those numbers that were just flashed for you on the screen. Big degrowth in terms of revenue, and they reported a net loss as well. And that explains why the stock is at the low point of the day. But let's move on then. Sources tell us that telcos have written to the Department of Telecom seeking Spectrum for 5G trials. Kritika Saxena, she's been on top of that. She's joining in to fill us in with all those details. Kritika? Hi, Nigel. So the key point to understand over here is that the clarity sought at this point is for the 5G field network trials. The 5G field network trials have to happen for a significant tenure before they can even think of applying for 5G auctions. 5G auctions, of course, have been delayed. But as far as this particular letter is concerned, we understand that telcos are basically asking for clarity on when that spectrum will be available. Remember, they had applied for the 5G trials back in December. They had gotten the clearance in Jan, and the expectation was that the 5G field trials will begin by March but of course that has not happened because this, of the situation globally but they have essentially said that they need to start the network trials by September they need to do it for at least six to nine months before they can even start to think about auctions and they need that tenure what they have suggested is that the uh, DOT give three bands first so that is 26 gigahertz 24 gigahertz and 3.5 gigahertz are the as these are the bands which require the most amount of testing and trials remember reliance geo had already written to the dot seeking spectrum for 5g trials in these bands uh, the players have highlighted that this is going to lead to india lagging behind global markets in the 5g adoption and we are already behind peers with respect to 5g the dot panel last year had suggested that 400 units of 24 gigahertz and 100 units of 3.5 gigahertz be offered for 5g trials per location and this is something that's been reiterated by the telcos and to uh, lastly they have also ended with the seeking clarity if at all the pricing of the eventual auction is going to be re-looked at and they've re-emphasized that they will not be able to bid unless it is competitive and affordable of course no official comments coming in from telecom operators all right thanks so much for that uh, kritika well on that note though we'll slip into a short break remember the markets are now holding back in the green after being in the red just around 20 minutes or so. You come back, we'll tell you a fresh trade on the Nifty. Prakash Gaba will join us with the trade on the Nifty and a couple of trading.